Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Around the House. I'm your host, Steve O'Brien. And as usual, we talk about home repair, home improvement. And I always say at the beginning of all the shows I've done, this is ought to be an interesting show. Well, I'm going to change that for this one show. Today's show is going to be a real crappy show, but we'll get through it together, I'm sure. So please stay with us. We, we're joined by Mr. Tracy White. Uh, he's the general manager of Casoli Septic Services and Excavation, uh, and they're located in Hanson, Mass. We're going to talk about septic systems. Uh, there's so many things to know about septic systems and how they operate and how to maintain them. Uh, we've got the, the perfect person here to enlighten us to uh, everything that's related to the septic system. Uh, please let me introduce uh, Mr. Tracy White. Nice to meet you, Steve. Thanks for joining us in Thanks the studio the, today. Thank you for the invite. Well, um, you are the expert in the field, <coughs> and um, we've got all kinds of good questions I'd like to ask you uh, today. Uh, let's start off, first of all, Tracy, w w what is a septic tank? So a septic tank is a tank that's made out of concrete, typically, and it's outside of your house, uh, buried underground. So everything that leaves your house, whether it be from your sink or your shower or your toilet or your tub, leaves your house and enters a tank, and that's the actual septic tank. And that's what they pump when they come to pump it out? Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, and where would that be located in one's yard? I've seen, I've seen some places they, they locate them in the backyard. I guess I, they have to do some kind of a test to f figure out where the tank would sit best, where it would, s it has to be down a certain distance so the water will drain down to it, right? Correct. So when the house is built or modified or added onto, when they design, the engineer will design the septic system, he will also figure out where the best place for the septic tank would be. Okay. They're typically know, side by side or one in front of another. Okay. So you, you can't put anything on top of, uh, uh, within so many feet of that. Like some people put a deck up and it's near the septic tank. Yeah, you don't want to put anything over because then you limit the access to be able to pump it later on. If you build a patio or a deck over it, come time to pump it, you're going to have to remove that patio or right. deck to that get to it. That makes sense. And in, in, in most tanks that I've seen have two covers. Correct. And why is that? Because there's an inlet side of the tank and an outlet side of the tank. So I can inspect one end of the tank, pull the cover and see the inlet side of the tank, and go to the other end, pull that cover and see the outlet side. I see. Is that, is that something that's done in a Title V inspection? Yes. So on a Title V inspection, I have to pull both ends and check the uh, tank itself as well as the T's and the fittings and the pipe and the t integrity of the tank itself. I see. So that, uh, now I thought with a Title V inspection, now in the, I don't want to get too off the, the, the uh, subject, but in my system, I know when they put it in, I was able to watch them do it. And uh, they, okay, they put a... Um, they call it a distribution box because I don't have a leaching field. I have tanks <coughs> because I had ledge in my front yard. Okay. So they put these tanks, concrete tanks, with, with holes in them. Yep. And they have three, three pipes going separately, to, one to each tank. Sure. Uh, and then we come out of the septic tank, the solid waste, with a single pipe into a square box, a, yep. a concrete box. Yep, that's the distribution, distribution box. Distribution box. Yep. Um, does that have to be inspected? Because I know that's down pretty deep. It does have to be inspected, yes. Oh, really? Yes. That's got to be down four or five feet anyway. It can be. Yes, it can oh, be. Oh, boy. I don't think I'm selling any time soon. So then. what that's ends up happening with oh. that inspection of that, uh, sometimes if it's down that far, we have to actually bring in a small excavator to dig that. Yeah, I've because seen them it, do that. it can be down quite far sometimes. I've seen them do that, bring in excavators. And I always wondered why, but that's to get at the distribution box. Correct. Do they have that in a leaching field, too? A distribution box? Uh, no, leaching field is a separate part of, a, of an actual septic system. I see. Now, now this is something, again, it's a, it's a little off, uh, I, but it's something it's okay. I'm thinking of it, and I'd like to ask it because if I don't, I, I'll forget about it. <laughs> no problem. But while we're talking about that, again, my house was built in the 80s. Okay. And codes have changed and things have changed. Now, I was told this. I don't know how true it is. Um, my house has a separate tank. There's actually two tanks for the washing machine. Because years ago, the soap would uh, do something so that the bacteria wouldn't work in the tank. So okay. they had to be separate. But I'm hearing now, with the new soaps they have, detergents, uh, it's safe to put that in a septic tank. Right. So to pass your, say we had to do a Title V on your house. Yeah. To make a Title V pass at your house, those have to be connected together now. No longer can you have a separate 
facility for your laundry and a separate facility for your sewerage. It's so already now, I failed. I haven't even... It's all, well, you don't fail. It's just a modification has to be changed. So Would that we, be expensive to do? It's best to do it inside the house. So oh, okay. So do the small, it's typically PVC, oh, so yeah. you can just have a plumber connect it inside the house. Ah, so everything, you just would eliminate that one tank you have, pump it dry, fill it with sand or cave it in or remove it, and then do, inside your house change your plumbing so that everything, including your washing machine, goes into that one existing tank. I see. I thought they had to dig up the ground outside to do it. No, I would do it inside. It's much easier to do it inside. I like a that. A plumber can just change the PVC. Yeah. Or I, I like that. that that's, that's cast iron. But that is something that's changed over the years. It has changed, yes. And now I notice with leaching fields now, when they, do, uh, when they do a new septic tank with a leaching field, there's a vent pipe comes up, sticking up out of the ground. Correct. What's the reason for that? For the system to breathe and for the, uh, the material from the septic to flow better. Think of this. If, I, um, if you took your soda bottle and didn't have any vent, it kind of chugs out of the bottle, correct? Yes. Put a little hole in the end, it slowly comes out. Much nicer, How right? How we ever survive all these years so without that it's, stuff? So it's more, it lets the system <laughs> breathe a little bit, yeah. and uh, everything flows a little bit smoother is really what it does. Okay, so that, that's, that's, again, that's part of the new code, though. Yes. No, yep. I, which I wouldn't say new, but it's been around for a while, but since my house was built, uh, you know, none of that stuff was in existence, and then you see them putting those stack pipes up, and some of them are pretty high. I've seen some go up four or five feet. Yeah, exactly. It, it depends on the area. Uh, you know, again, it's all... It's all in the area, the, the town you're located in, the, their particular codes and everything else, I'm sure. Exactly. And the engineer who draws it, they all have a little ways, they, different things they do from one another. So okay. that's part of it. But at the end, they're all vented today. They're all vented. Yes. Okay. Hopefully someday we'll be tied into storage. And then we, we can complain about mass water resources, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> they charge you for the, the water going in, the water coming out. <laughs> so I'm happy with this. It, it's worked well for me for 20 years. Um, how, how often now should I have my septic tank pumped? <clears throat> I, you should have it pumped every two years. Every two years? Every two years, yep. And now why is that? Well, because what ends up happening if you don't pump it every two years, the tank actually starts to fill up with sludge. From the soap and stuff? From the soap, um, it just creates sludge. And the sludge will just keep building up and building up and building up. And once that sludge starts leaving your septic tank, it gets to the distribution box and then leaches out into your septic field or your um, infiltrators or your leaching pits like you have. And that's what actually makes the system fail. Those pipes become clogged. Those leaching pits become clogged. I get a Because call you, you <laughs> left everything in there too long. <laughs> I, have, I haven't done mine in 20 some odd years. So I would say you to. probably do. Okay, so that's something I got to plan on in the spring. Yes. I did. Uh, I, I did, did it. Did it once in the whole 28 years, 30 years I've been there. I've done yep. it once, and uh, it's not that I'm not. I don't want to spend the money. It's just everything seems to be working fine, and that that leads me to my next question: How do you know uh, when your system has a, when you're having a problem with your system? There's a lot of answers to that question, but the very basic answers are going to be: You're going to have a hard time flushing. Um, your sink in the kitchen is not going to drain quite as fast as it used to. You may have an odor outside. You may notice that the, it's snowed and there's a little bit of snow or frost in the ground, but not over there. The grass is still warm or the ground is warm. It's moist, it's wet, it smells. Then you've got a problem. I get that where my, my septic tank is probably maybe a foot under part of my walkway, which yep. is a brick walkway. And I notice if we take, like in the morning, we'll take a shower. The kids will have a shower, I'll sure. have a shower. I'll notice sometimes the snow will be melted on that yep. part of the walk. Exactly. But it's only because of the hot water, I think, coming into the tank, maybe. Exactly. I'm and the hoping. heat rises up through. And yeah. especially when it's only a foot or so underground, that ground will pretty much stay thawed forever, warm. even when it's, yeah. I mean, it may freeze a little bit, but that's what I'm talking about. Those are little signs you'll see. Not that yours has the problem because the tank actually lets the heat out. Okay. But if it was a leaching field or further in your backyard near the trees, you noticed it was smelly and mushy all the time, no. um, then you would, might want to find okay. out. I understand, yeah, because we, we years ago, when, they, when I know my parents years ago, they didn't, I don't th think they even had a septic system back in the old days. It was a cesspool. Yeah, absolutely. And I can remember the grass was always green around that yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> we played baseball out there, and it, that was the one spot you didn't want to go out near because it was always sure. wet and yep. it was gray water. Yeah, so that's exactly what you'd notice if you had a problem today. It's the same okay. idea. Then it's at the point where you've got to probably end up uh, redoing your leaching field. Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, now, before I figure another question that I was thinking about earlier, what, I think we even talked about it <coughs> earlier, what shouldn't you put down your, your uh, <laughs> let's say, your, your sink or your toilet 
um, versus what you can put down. What, what are, what's the right things that you can put down into a septic tank that will you know break down? Right. So you shouldn't be dumping any grease from frying anything, any oils, any. Um, you shouldn't be throwing food down there. Um, those are all things that kill bacteria. Those are things that solidify. They, you know, instead of like when grease goes down there, it's going to sit on top of the water and it's never going to go anywhere. It's going to stay there. Okay. And the more you do it, the bigger problem it becomes. Okay. Um, as far as flushing items, you really don't want to flush anything other than toilet paper and basically human waste. Other than that, it doesn't belong down there. Okay. Women's products, makeup, tissues, baby wipes, napkins, like baby that. wipes. They don't break down. I know that. It, it's a problem. Okay, yep. and it's that that'll problem. end up at some point clogging up the inlets, and the, uh, it could could cause a lot of trouble down the line. Yeah, especially now that a lot of the systems um, from the mid '90s and on, when uh, Title V became more popular and everybody had to abide by the new rules, there's okay. actually there's a filter in the actual system now. A screen. A, a filter. Yep. And, and that gets replaced? Or? Yeah, it's a replaceable filter. It's called a Zabel filter, and there's a couple different models and styles. Really? But there's a filter in the system, and it's actually on the outlet side of the tank. So everything that comes into the tank has to be able to get through that filter now to be able to make it to the distribution box mm -hmm. or the leaching field. So it's even you have to pay more attention to what gets flushed now because it can actually clog the filter and not let anything out, and the tank will actually overflow. Which is a good thing in a way because then you're not replacing your whole leaching field because something right. might buy it. Exactly. So but it's more important to not put anything down there that doesn't belong down there. And most of your toilet papers today are made to break down in the septic tank. Correct. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, because I, I, I had a neighbor who used to constantly be pumping out a system. And uh, I found out the one thing, he, w he was using a garbage disposal. And I don't think he realized that. You know, it doesn't break down like solid waste, and, and the bacteria is not the same. Well, exactly, yeah, and it's a, it becomes a problem. And most of the times, if you see a system that's failed, an older system, there was never a filter in place, it hadn't been pumped in a long, long time, and it's just expired. It just has had its, its life has come had to an its, end. Had its time, yeah. Had its time, pretty much, yes. All right, well, that's, thank you, Tracy. That, that covers a lot of what I wanted to ask you, but I do have some more questions, sure. if you don't mind. Oh, no, absolutely, help yourself. What, what, what is a camera inspection? <clears throat> That's a great question. It's actually a m little bit newer technology. So what it is, is some of the older houses, um, you know, they say, hey, my grandfather put the septic system in in 1965. Um, we would like to get it pumped. Well, where is it? I have no idea where it is. Um, so what we have is a camera. We actually can go inside the house. Typically, there's an inspection port, you know, like a cover or cap that would be on the end of a pipe. Yep. Um, we will undo that cover, and we can send a camera down there until we find a, a D box, a distribution box, or a tank, or a cesspool. Once I find that, um, this camera actually puts off a, like a sonar signal. I go outside with another tool, and I can find that camera underground. Really? Once I find that camera, it, my tool will actually tell me how deep in the ground my camera actually is, That's and amazing. where it's located, within a foot. So I can go outside and do my work. I can tell you, I can put next on the ground with some paint and say, this is where the cesspool is right here. That's it amazing. could be in the left corner, the right corner, it could be under the driveway. Nobody knows where it is. Uncle Harry put it in 60 years yeah. ago. Where is it? The people living there now go, I have no idea. We've never touched it. And so we can actually locate it without ripping your whole yard apart. That's amazing technology. Now, do you, do you, have you used that a lot? Quite a bit, yeah. We've yeah. used it for people who have had, um, uh, uh, you know, they say, hey, we've got a septic backup. Um, so we can find out where there's a crushed pipe or, oh, yeah, yeah. or you know, a root going through the pipe. A root or through the yeah, pipe yeah, yeah. or okay. we just actually had a uh, customer that had a problem, a commercial piece of property, and uh, we were actually to be able to send the camera down the pipe. And we, under the parking lot, we realized that somebody had um, crushed the D-box. It actually crushed down over time. And um, it was, that's what the clogging the sewage from getting to the leaching field. So rather than dig up the whole parking lot, you just isolate it to a certain spot. That's amazing technology. Yep, I can go out there and mark it with paint, and I can tell you this is where we are. So you have the, the little sonar. It gives us a little signal. Yep. And you go up with a, with a um, device. Yeah, it's above. like a wand. It kind of looks like a sword almost, yeah. but it makes a pitching noise. And um, I just kind of walk around, and there's a screen on it, and it tells me where the cable's going. And I can wow. follow the cable all the way to the end. When I get to the end, it will show me the end of the camera. That's amazing. Wow. Well, so rather than go digging the whole yard up, yeah, it saves that, a lot of time and a lot of money. Absolutely. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. That, that was something I'm, I, I hope the viewers um, got that all because it's really good information. If you have something like that and it's, uh, uh, you don't know where the crushed 
pipe might be or the route going through it, um, you save yourself a considerable amount of money doing it that way. Yeah, we've gone right. Sure. Even people who are on town sewage have had yeah. a problem where there's a big tree out in the front. Yeah, the tree's roots have grown so much, it's grown right through the pipe. Oh, they and can even buckle the pipe if they get under it. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, can, well, it can put a belly in it and crease cool. it down so the flow stops. And so it's a pretty interesting tool. Wow, that, it's technology for you. It, yeah, it nev exactly. Never, it, it is never any end to the, the new things that they come up with, and I'm always amazed to learn that new technology. I mean, it's probably not that new, but, you know, I haven't seen it, so um, that's wonderful stuff. Um, what's an observation hole? An observation hole is, uh, so in order to do a Title V today, you, there are several uh, pieces that have to be done. I have to ins inspect your house as far as the count of bedrooms. I have to make sure that your laundry is connected. And I have to do a complete evaluation of your actual septic system. So I got to do the tank, the D-box, and whatever I can of the vent or the leaching field. But what ends up happening, systems that are, in, that are older than, say, the mid-90s, the towns now make you determine where the groundwater is in the, versus the septic system, how deep in the ground. So let's just say this is what they don't want to see. They don't want you to have your septic system sitting in groundwater. Right. They want a separation. So if your system is old or then the mid-90s, I have to, on my report, determine how I found groundwater. I have to have a, re a reliable source that says this is exactly how I found groundwater. The only way to find the groundwater is dig a hole. So we take a small machine out somewhere in the corner of your yard, away from your septic, and we dig down till we find water. Mm -hmm. Once I find water, then I can take that measurement versus where your septic is to make sure that they're not touching. I have a space between the two. Okay, interesting. And that's what an observation hole is. And it has to be done, I can't guess at it, I have to have actual facts. I have to stand behind this at the and end of the Title V. And that's all relating to the Title V? That's part of the Title V rules, yes. And Let that's pretty uh, standard, uh, anything in the mid-90s or older. Well, that would, yeah, I'd fall under that category then. Um, yes. What, what, uh, now, with, with, you're a licensed inspector and installer. Correct. Uh, you have to be licensed, uh, I think I, I heard you had to be licensed in each town that you want to do uh, this work in. Yeah, so basically, I hold a state license. Okay. And I have to be permitted in each town. So if permit. I was going to come to town and do something in, say, East Bridgewater, I have to go there and pay a permit fee to be able to work in town, yes. I see. And it really doesn't affect my license as much as it does just the permit to work there. That's kind of like myself uh, with a general contractor license. Each I have a state license in each town. I, same thing if I want to do work. Right. Uh, if it's extensive work, I have to pull a, a building permit in that particular town. So same type thing, I guess. Exactly. I, I always thought you had to be licensed in the town. Well, the permit is almost, they call it, they describe it as a license, but really it's just a permit that says you're allowed to work in our town and you have an updated you know, right. certificate. And, and you would work closely with the Board of Health and the Conservation Commission or just the Board of Health mainly? Well, typically like on a Title V inspection or a, Title or a septic repair of some sort, mm -hmm. I don't really do much with conservation unless I was going to install a system and I was going to oh. be within the buffer zone of... Okay of a conservation problem or, or water or something, then I would have to go and do a presentation to conservation. Um, but if it's a septic repair or septic pumping or a Title V, really my paperwork is done and completed and turned into the actual Board of Health. I see. Um, now, that brings me to another point. I've seen people in my own neighborhood, uh, obviously they failed uh, the Title V mm -hmm. and that have this system the, the leach field mainly redone and they dig out all the old gravel and everything else and bring in new stuff and I know that has to be perkable, is that what they call it? Yeah. So the water will filtrate through it yep. and the old it's stuff a, gets clogged up? Correct. So they, they excavate down to um, the soils that were determined by the engineer because the system has to be drawn by an engineer. So if you have a, le if you have a leaching field that's in failure, um, you have to have it drawn by a, you know, a licensed engineer, present it to the town, they okay the project, then you have to excavate the old out and put new sand in and build a new system on the sand. And they dump that anywhere? Is that considered hazardous waste or anything? It's not really considered hazardous waste. Um, you can't dump it anywhere. There's only so many places that will take it or um, to aerate it and, and maybe they, use they, it later on. They but reprocess it? And they yeah. It I mean, you can't use it for another septic system. You can't haul it out. I couldn't haul it from one house and bring it to you and dump it as filling. That wouldn't house. be good. No. No. So no, no, <laughs> it doesn't work out very well. <laughs> Well, that, that's also another thing I wanted to ask you in regards to that is why is it there's some, uh, you probably know where I'm going with this one, uh, I've seen some that come out really nice 
And then I've seen some, they got this big mountain in the front yard all of a sudden they never had before. Yep. Why do some not have to put a mountain in their yard where other people do? We're going to go right back to the observation hole. So the observation hole in your yard, I might find water at seven feet down. So therefore I can put a, let's say the typical system is about four feet in, in height. The tank. Right. Yep. Or the actual leaching field. So say the leaching field is say four feet in height, mm -hmm. but it, I could fit it in the ground because your water is at seven feet. So I have a big enough separation between oh, the two. Okay. If I come to your house and your house is, has three feet, of, I dig down, I find water at three feet. Oh. Now the separation is above ground. I see. Therefore, I have to put the system above ground and retain it typically. So you'll see that the, you'll have a mound in the yard and it will either be a long taper or sometimes you'll see they even have big blocks kind of built around it yeah. to try to hold it back, hold it back from washout. So yeah. when I mean washout, when it rains or snows, it doesn't just kind of be become washed, a mound of dirt that gets washed away. Right. So right. we have to contain it in some instances. Not all, but depends on where we find that water. Then that, that's part of that observation hole we talk about. I, I've, I've, seen, I've seen some of those uh, done in a really nice manner where it, where it kind of blends in. They, like you say, they taper it. Mm -hmm. Then I've seen some, they just like stuck the dirt there and um, built a concrete wall around it, like a foundation wall. Yeah, uh, it's, and, and it's like, you know, I, I, I I, you got to do what you have to do to get the right. system to work, Absolutely. I understand, but uh, I, I just hope that never happens to me, let's put it that <laughs> way. But, but that's the difference in cost, right? It's cheaper if you don't have to bring all that and mount it than if you, stay, if you can stay within the, the grade that's already there. Well, the biggest cost, honestly, between a system that is mounted and a system that's not mounted, so we'll talk about two of the biggest factors. One of the bigger expenses on a system that's mounted, which is what we describe as a raised system, is the barrier that needs to put around the outside, whether it be concrete blocks or a foundation of some sort, that's a fairly big expense. The other expense is this system now becomes what we describe as a pump system. So you have two separate septic tanks. So it, everything that leaves your house goes into the first septic tank by gravity. Okay. It then goes to the second tank by gravity. Once it hits the second tank, it's strictly liquids. And the, when that tank starts to fill up, a pump comes on and pumps it up to that mound you see. Oh boy. So it's gravity, gravity, pumps it up. And now you've got electricians involved, pump system involved, two tanks involved. It system starts to get a little bit expensive yeah, compared to, yeah, yeah. so yeah, and you know, alarm system. So if it yeah. pump fails, alarm will go off in your house, let you know there's a problem. So it's a little more in depth of a system and it takes yeah. a little more, you got to be a little more uh, careful as far as installation with because you got electric involved, you got pumps involved, Ooh. maintenance a little bit higher. But if you have a high water table, there's not a lot of choices, unfortunately. Right, right. And unfortunately, I don't. So um, that, that's a blessing in disguise for me. But um, I'm going to throw another question at you while we still have a little bit of time left, Tracy. Sure. Um, are all leaching fields the same size? Is there any specific uh, rule of thumb when you're figuring the size of a leaching field? There is no specific size. Some towns have minimums. So, for instance, some towns will say, we don't allow you to build anything but anything smaller than a two-bedroom system. Even if you have a one-bedroom house, this is the minimum size of septic leaching nice. field yeah. you have to have. What it's really based on is the amount of bedrooms your home has. Okay. So if you have five bedrooms, I have to build and design a system that's going to accommodate five bedrooms. But I don't there's care no if you water coming from the bedrooms. How do they figure that? How many people, people could live the there? How many people right. could live here? Okay. That's what they look at. Okay. Um, years ago, it used to be how many bathrooms? Yeah, I would think so. Now it's kind of flipped around the other way. Okay. Um, because what they try to figure out is how many people can actually live here? Can 10 people live here? I need to have the system handle 10 people. You could have 35 bathrooms. We don't care. It doesn't make any difference to us. It's how many people are living in How the many house. people can potentially live but here? But even if you have two bathrooms, they still can only use so many. It can only have two toilets going. I, I understand. I'm just trying to make no, an I, argument. No, I know. Yep. And, and it's, it's just, I, again, it, it's, it's better to be overly uh, careful than not have enough. Right. I, and there's I, a formula I, to this whole thing. There's um, gallons per day per bedroom, and it's a formula that, that the engineers work with, which will actually determine how big this actual field has to be. Yeah, I'm hoping mine, I mean, again, I got three tanks that act as a leaching field. Um, and they, and, they, and they, when they designed my system, the guy said to me, and this is going back in the 80s, yep. early 80s, like 82. Uh, he said, you should, this system is over-designed. You should never have a problem with it. And again, that was back in the 80s. Sure, so, it's still I there. Mean, when I go to sell my house, 
I don't know if they're going to make me dig them up. I don't, you know, this is the scary part. Right. If they tell me I got to dig them up and redo a leaching field, I might just live there <laughs> for the rest <laughs> of my life. It's just a hassle to me. It's, it's not, sure, I, understand. I mean, to make it right, um, it, you know, everything works, everything flushes fine, shower, everything works great. Uh, so it's like if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's my mentality. But I do have to get my tank pumped, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to plan on doing that uh, probably in the spring. You guys come out to Hanover? Sure. Absolutely. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get a price and see what you guys are charging me to do And that. it's not a bad idea, honestly. It's a, it's a short investment to think about throwing a filter in there. You can still do that? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Okay, because I still remember my tank had the, the baffles on each end. It actually they came in with the, the four-inch pipe, and it teed down. Right. And that was kind of so the water didn't splash. It goes... The water will come in and go down underneath the, the, the water itself, yep. so it's not hitting the top and causing a waving right. action. So you should have one on each end of the tank. So on the outlet end of the tank, that filter fits right in that four-inch T. Okay. So I'm going so to have to not a lot to do as far as modifications go. When, when I have you guys come out, I'll have to do that. Now, I, I did put a, an extension on the, one, on the inlet side. Okay. So that, because that's where they pump it from. I don't know if I need it on both sides. They only pump it from one side. Or do I need a, a, an extension on both ends? Well, if you have a filter on the outlet side, that's where you should pump it from, simply because you only open one cover and you can get two jobs done. You can pump the system, clean the filter, and put the filter back. Okay. If you uh, go to the other end, you kind of now got to dig up both sides. We're going to have to talk about that in the spring. Maybe I'll give you a call. You have to, we'll touch base on that. Sure. We'll hook really you right up. <laughs> 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 we're running low on time. I, I, I could talk about this for hours. There's a lot of stuff to cover, and we, we just touched on what we could cover, but... Tracy, I want to thank you for coming in. Thank you for the invite. I appreciate all your time. All right, it was very it was nice very talking with you. Informative. It was a crappy subject, but we got That's through all right. it. Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank all my viewers out there for watching the show. Uh, as usual, uh, all my local communities that watch the show, we have about eight, maybe we're, we're working on a couple more, but I think right now currently there's eight communities watching the show. And um, we're very thankful that they air our show. And uh, thanks for all the questions and comments uh, that we do get. Uh, it helps a lot with the, uh, with the new shows. that we're, we're coming up with some good shows. We've got some great ideas. So uh, I hope you can keep tuning in to Around the House. Um, we've got great new ideas all the time coming up. And again, if you have any suggestions, uh, you can email them uh, directly to me. That would be finishdimensions at yahoo.com. Or you could visit my website at finishdimensions.com. And Tracy, you have any information you want to pass along to the viewers as far as uh, email, web, website, anything sure, like that? Sure, if you have any issues or any questions at all, please feel free to call the office at 781-293-2463. We offer 24-hour service. If you do have an emergency, we'll be glad to come out and help you. There you go. Couldn't get a more knowledgeable guy than, than this guy here. I'm telling you, he's, he's going to get a call from me in the spring for sure. So uh, that about does it for another show. Um, again, thanks for watching, and I hope you can... Keep on watching all our other shows that we have planned. Uh, we got some good ones coming up. So thanks again. Have a great day, and um, we'll see you on the next show. forget that moment that moment it was a moment that changed my life i'd been training with my team for months and now we had been called up for the first time the real deal wildfires were getting dangerously close to home at that moment i got my first taste of just how important the guard is to my community see how the guard can be an important part of your life at nationalguard.com